Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Adding new electricity generation is a major feature of the reconstruction and recovery plan unveiled by President Soren Ramaphosa this week. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the plan and whether the electricity targets can be met. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. As expected, electricity forms a major part of the recovery plan. Yes, we've been in an electricity crisis for more than a decade now and all the interventions we've taken so far, which have generally been led by Eskom, although there isn't a big RPP or a growing force of RPPs in the system, uh, have not really got us through the crisis. So we now have had our worst load shedding year ever uh, in 2020. 2019, prior to that, was our worst, most intensive load sh shedding year. So we're in a crisis and it hasn't got any better. So it was inevitable that uh, to, to when we look at the recovery and the post-COVID uh, economic plan, electricity supply and affordable electricity supply needed to be part of that and uh, stabilizing the crisis. So therefore it was a big part, of, it is a big part of the plan and uh, uh, the president outlined quite a number of steps that would be taken. Uh, the restructuring of Eskom being one, which will facilitate more RPP investment, but generally uh, moving to implement the integrated resource plan of 2019 which caters for the introduction of about 12,000 megawatts of new capacity over the next three to four years. Renewable energy receives particular emphasis. Yes, this was important because you know, renewable energy is not only the, the cheapest to build and the easiest to finance, but it's uh, also where um, government can leverage private balance sheets. So we know that um, uh, there's a number of developers that are looking to build wind and solar in South Africa. We've seen uh, four bid windows under the Renewable ind Independent Power Producer. We've got into our groove. We had got into our groove until Eskom refused to sign power purchase agreements back in 2015, which led to a gap of about four and a half years before we started construction again. Construction did resume in 2018, and we see some of those projects entering the system. But the integrated resource plan is very renewables uh, heavy. It does cater, yes, for some new coal, for gas to power, for energy storage, and potentially in the longer run, some, some hydro. But really, uh, what, there's, a, there's a sense that renewables is the quickest and cheapest way to build new capacity in uh, the South African system. We've got a very formidable wind and solar resource based and that needs to be exploited as we exploited the coal base in the past to develop a stable and low cost uh, electricity system for all other uh, economic activity to build around from agriculture and mining all the way to the services industry. We rely on electricity. What was important because there was some behind the scenes uncertainty was that the recovery plan doesn't include any new nuclear. Now that I think would have undermined the credibility of the uh, of the electricity portion of the or the energy portion of the recovery plan entirely because we know that one the small scale modular reactors that government is talking about don't exist commercially so there's a whole commercialization development process that is still underway internationally south africa isn't directly involved in any of those because we gave up on our pebble bed modular reactor program so we're not a direct player in uh, in uh, small scale modular reactors anymore and uh, really, um, realistically, if we went for the old traditional uh, 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 nuclear reactors, these would take at least 12 years to, to develop and get over the line where we start seeing electrons. So when we're talking about an immediate recovery, we're wanting immediate action and uh, electricity that can be brought onto the system um, in a couple of years rather than decades. Do you think the plan is enough to meet the president's target of solving the power crisis within two years? Yes, it was a, I think it raised a lot of eyebrows, this issue of two years, and also the time frames uh, that uh, the president included in his speech are a bit unrealistic, um, well, very unrealistic in the sense that, you know, even to build renewables, as I said, the, the quickest uh, form of new electricity is solar PV followed by wind. And even to do that takes a couple of years. And that's after you've got uh, your procurement processes underway. So where we are at the moment is, yes, we are going to have a fifth bid window, 
of the renewable energy power procurement program, and uh, but we haven't yet put out a request for proposals. So we've had a determination, a ministerial determination, which opens the way for 6,800 megawatts of solar and wind. But we need to get to uh, this, the launch of bidding. And the RPP office, which is the custodian of the, the bidding program and oversees it for government, has indicated that that RFP at best will come out in December, but is most likely to come out only in January next year. There will then be a, a three-month bidding process, They'll which will be followed by a further three months of um, a bid evaluation that takes us to the middle of the year, then takes another six to eight months to get the project to financial close. That takes us into 2022. That's when shovels enter the ground. And then there's a, a build program that takes you know any bit, anywhere between 18 and 24 months. So 2022 is not when we're going to be s seeing the end of the power crisis. That's two years' time. It's going to be closer to the 2024 uh, time frame if we get our act together and get the bidding process uh, underway. Where I think the, where there may be a muddle is that if Eskom is able to get its energy availability factor up from its coal fleet um, and stabilize the performance of a very volatile coal fleet, then maybe we will be a little bit more out of the woods in two years' time. But I think as Eskom does the, the, the reliability maintenance, they're finding that it's, it's going to be very expensive to restore some of these units, some of which are, are already up for retirement. And I think some may even be retired even earlier. And that's why the, the CEO of Eskom is saying that the 11,800 uh, uh, megawatts of new capacity is not only urgent, but needs to be expanded. Uh, and accelerated to bring in more new generation capacity because it's unlikely, well, if the Kali fleet does recover to a high EAF, which is more like at the 75% level rather than the current 66 type level, then it's going to be off a much smaller base because there's going to be units there that are just going to be too expensive and too dirty to return to service. So I think that the credibility, while there was a lot of happiness around the fact that it's a renewables-led recovery uh, uh, plan and not, doesn't have um, ideas about bringing in coal and nuclear, which are much longer lead times, and I think there was some relief around that. Uh, there was some confusion around this 2022 time horizon, which is uh, unlikely to be met by the new renewables uh, and will only be partially met by the risk mitigation program, the tender process for which is underway, but which seems to be very uh, fossil fuel uh, leverage towards fossil fuels. So this is, uh, this is really bringing in maybe gas generators, diesel generators, which we know are highly expensive and, th and problems that we would like to wash out of the system, uh, not have 20 year uh, PPAs, which is the way the program unfortunately is currently designed. You want to try to wash out very expensive uh, diesel or ga gas plant. So there, there is a little bit of confusion but I still think relief that there's sense has prevailed and this is a renewable led recovery during COVID, a recovery from, from the pandemic uh, rather than trying to integrate or uh, um, balance all the wishes of all the different energy actors, uh, some of which have many, many years to go, I think, before we see a credible, uh, for instance, small scale modular reactor program. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.